Hi everybody, um, so this video is going to be a little bit different, a little bit of a change of pace. Um, I'm working in a slightly different way. There's no footage of me, there's no real film footage in this at all, as basically still images, but I wanted to do a little bit of a discussion about the origins and the prototype for the one ton Land Rovers. I've been meaning to do this for quite a while and it was kind of difficult to work through how I was going to do it, but hopefully, you know, this will make some sense. But um, really the origin lies in two places. Um, we've got, I mean, the image that's on screen at the moment should be of a, um, it's a military 2A on what appear to be 900 by 16 or 900 by 15 sand tires. And this is a British Army vehicle, but by the early 60s, it, it's thought to be an Australian uh, origin um, sort of modification that the vehicles would have extended spring mounts to allow them to run larger tyres. So certainly by the early 60s, I, I, I think by about 1960 or 61, uh, 916s or 915s were an optional fitment on 109s. And I remember seeing that in a, a pretty early, uh, I don't know if it was a workshop manual or a salesman manual or something for the either very late series twos of, or very early two A's. So we know that they were optional at that point. We also had in that sort of late 50s, early 60s, we had the 129 inch prototype vehicles. Um, these were called one tonners. These were... They were actually, I think, about a ton and a quarter or a ton and a half payload, um, basically a very much oversized Land Rover. And that was a response to the, you know, the requirements that had been, or the demands, I should say, that had been in, in place for a long time for bigger Land Rovers with more payload. Uh, this was a project that came to nothing. Ultimately, it was scrapped in favour of the forward control, but it still left this bit of a gap. We've then got this photograph, which dates from, I believe, either 1964 or 65, of a 109 uh, on clearly on 916A Von tyres. Um, appears to be broadly civilian specification, although it does look, look to have a, a military type rear cross member. Um, it's left hand drive. Could it be that a foreign armed force wanted uh, vehicles with a bigger payload? Maybe it was a one ton payload. So certainly the, the documentation that is around with this photograph would suggest the idea was floating about at that time. So we're looking at mid 60s, 64, 65, uh, that, that it was first floated. Um, we've then got this vehicle which could well be the same vehicle i'm not sure i think there were two of these one of which is now in america and these were again they, they were early spec 2a's pre-67 um loosely military spec um this one has a hydraulic winch this one i believe is the one that ended up in america and these were, again, somewhat uprated. They had 916 tyres on there, but still four-cylinder petrol engines. Uh, so we're not quite a one-ton. But as time went on, we did get to this vehicle, which is a six-cylinder 109 military spec on 916s with ENV axles. And this photograph, absolutely amazing photograph, is this vehicle after it was disposed of by Land Rover in use as a breakdown truck. And at the time, the, the people, they didn't really know what it was, but it, it was essentially um, two one-ton spec. It's six-cylinder, it's got the ENV axles, it's got the 916s on the deep dish rims, it's got the low gearing. So, although this was a prototype and it was used um, towing a powered trailer, but this was the first vehicle that sort of really it was really a one ton in specification. The only real difference from production, of course, was the front end. Uh, the front uh, the the front end on production vehicles was all uh, lamps and wings. 
We then got this vehicle, um, quite famous, YX E320F, um, which is a brochure vehicle. It's actually a standard three-quarter ton, six-cylinder 109. And in the close-ups here, you can see that they've put wooden blocks in the suspension to give the clearance for the tyres. So not a one ton. I've seen a couple of vehicles floating about over the years claiming to be this vehicle. Um, I, I don't believe they are. I mean, this one, is, as we can see from the exhaust routing, it's definitely a six cylinder. Uh, again, it's, um, I'm pretty sure it's got the rear um, petrol tank as well. It certainly hasn't got it behind the cab door. Uh, so, and the, the chassis number is a standard 345 prefix, um, right hand drive, 1096 cylinder utility. So, although used for the brochure photographs, it doesn't really um lead anywhere it was just a sort of photographic mule and literally they just put the wheels and tires on uh, to get the to get the brochure ready for when the vehicle was launched then i have another vehicle now this is lulabelle a uh, very interesting vehicle built 1964 it was thought to have prototyped the six cylinder installation in land rovers it was built as a two and a quarter petrol uh, ended up at some point with a six cylinder in it, so we believe. Uh, ended up with a V8 and a Range Rover gearbox and accompanied two. Now, I can't remember if they're prototype or very early production Range Rovers. I think they're prototypes across the Sahara in 1969. And it was also used as a test bed for the V8 engine and gearbox. Um, and um, it was called a one ton again but technically wasn't it, it uh, the photos would seem to say that it had rover axles it was on 900s um but i don't think it was particularly related to the one ton i mean they if they wanted to at the time they could have used a a, um, a factory one ton they were in production at the time um they didn't but lula bell nevertheless is a very very interesting vehicle and um one i'm i'm very interested in researching and uh, discovering more about i'd love to know what happened to it as far as i know it was last on the road i think about nine uh, early 90s something like that be interesting to see if it's still out there we've then got this is production number one so i just wanted to cover this very briefly um quite a few photographs of this exist um, it appears as though it was used to showcase different bodyworks that were fitted to um, Land Rovers at the time. So we've got it here with a stake side body, a small high ab crane mounted behind the cab, a Dixon bait fifth wheel conversion uh, and a, a hole boring unit um, on the back there. Now these only with the high ab as it got the number plate JXC165H which was that vehicle's registration that's in the factory registration books at Gaydon. um the others it would appear to be the same vehicle it's deep bronze green it's clearly on 916s it does swap some of the photos it has dunlop tires others it has avons not quite sure what was going on there whether it was just to showcase or test out the different tires and then finally we've got this picture which would seem to be this vehicle uh, fitted with a Mark II hydraulic winch, um, Dunlop tyres and a hard top body in what appears to be overall deep bronze green. Um, the ENV axle and the drop suspension are pretty obvious. Um, again, would be interesting to know what happened to it. Believed to have been scrapped in 1991, uh, but you never know what's out there. But um, yeah, might, might be out there somewhere. Uh, but yeah, just a brief sort of overview there. I hope that's been of interest. Um, any questions, please ask. Um, I'll do my best to answer. And if, you know, any information or photographs or anything, please do get in touch. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. Uh, thanks everybody for the subscriptions and the likes and the comments and everything. Uh, keep it coming and um, I'll see you again in the next one.